Today you're gonna learn a self-working card trick that's perfect for beginners and professionals. Yo, it's your boy Six and welcome back to another card trick tutorial. Today's effect comes from the brilliant mind of Paul Harris, who is an absolute legend in the magic community. His books, The Art of Astonishment, are some of the greatest magic books ever published, and he is highly creative with the way he thinks about magic. I was actually fortunate enough to meet him when I was a teenager at a David Blaine event, and the first effect that I showed him was the first trick that I ever created, and he told me he was shocked by it, and that ended up being the title of the trick, and it would later be published in Magic Magazine, which is pretty cool. But today we're looking at a very specific effect from book number two called Overkill. It is a self-working trick that is super easy to do. It is easy enough for the beginner, but it's powerful enough for the professional. So I think if you liked the last video, which you guys have, thank you so much for the support on that. It's been blowing up. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, drop a comment because it's really been bringing me a lot of new followers. So welcome to the page. But this effect, I promise you is just as good as that effect. So let's get into today's tutorial. So now we're going to take a look at the performance of Overkill by Paul Harris. Uh, the spectator is going to be asked to cut off a small packet of cards and hold on to that. Now the magician at this point turns away because I'm by myself, I'm going to play both magician and spectator, but the magician turns away so they can't hear or see anything and the spectator is asked to count the cards they cut off to get a random number. So this is all done by chance. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So this is gonna be the spectator's magic number, right? Uh, they're gonna hold on to this packet, they can hold it between their hands, put it in their pocket. I'm just gonna place it underneath the mat here. Once they know that number, the magician turns back around and here's what's gonna happen. I'll pick up from that point. So you cut off a packet at random and you counted them and you got a random number. Well, I'm gonna create a question mark, right? I need a little bit of help, a little mystic help, if you will. Uh, and then with that question mark, we're gonna try something with your random number. So I'll put out, I don't know, I don't think you have less than, you have less than 20 cards. So we'll use less than, we'll do 20. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and that is 20. So now we have uh, our 20 cards in the shape of a question mark. Cause I'm gonna try to see if we can get inside your mind. First, you're thinking of a number. I'm gonna count through these cards. When you hear your number, I want you to think of the card that is at that number. So this could be completely random, whatever number you have. Uh, when I po point to that card, when you hear that number, that's the one you remember. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So now the spectator should have a card in their mind at the moment. And because I have my mystic question mark, I'm gonna place my hand over just like this and I'm gonna try to get a sensation to see if I could figure out what card they are now thinking of. Focus on that card. I'm getting a feeling it's a picture card actually, which is interesting. It's like one of the Jack Queens of Kings. Uh, maybe the Ace, actually, actually it's not, you know, I got a sensation from the Ace, but I'm gonna go with the King of Hearts. Are you thinking of the King of Hearts? And the spectator respond, of course, because that's the, the card they're thinking of. And you know, what's crazy about that is that maybe you think that I knew, like that I had these cards, I touched them, that maybe I knew how many cards were missing, so I knew which card you were thinking of. But I really knew you were gonna stop at the King of Hearts and I can prove it. You see, because even in the card box, before I started, I wrote in the card box, the King of Hearts, right there written in ink on the box. But I know what you're thinking, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking maybe I'm so sneaky that I felt how many cards were there, I knew which card it was when I dealt it out, and then I got a pen real fast and I snuck over here and I wrote it down. That's why I went even further than that. How, what did I do? Well, I knew you were gonna stop at the King of Hearts because I made sure that the rest of these cards were all black cards. See, the back design on these are all black, except for your card, the King of Hearts, which happens to have a red back design from a different deck of cards. So I knew you would stop here. I knew, but may, maybe you think that somehow I knew the King of Hearts was gonna be here and I put it there and I switched the card and I wrote in the box and then I made the different color back here. But I knew you would pick the King of Hearts the entire time because actually you knew. Remember at the beginning of this trick, you cut off a packet of cards that you've held onto the entire time that no one's touched except you? Take that packet, flip it face up, take a look at the card that you cut to. It actually also is the King of Hearts. You found uh, exactly the King of Hearts. So we knew we had the King of Hearts, King of Hearts, King of Hearts, King of Hearts. Uh, then that is Overkill by Paul Harris. So let's go ahead and take a look at that explanation. Hey 
Hey, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to hit that like button. It's really important because it helps feed the YouTube algorithm monster. Uh, so be sure to hit that like button. It really helps push the channel. And I thank you for your support. Let's get back to today's tutorial. All right, let's talk about this wonderful effect from the mind of Paul Harris. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take out the King of Hearts from uh, your matching deck. So in this case, this is the black deck. So I'm gonna take out the King of Hearts from here. Uh, and that's gonna go on top of the pack. Then you're gonna take the red King of Hearts from another deck, right, any color. Uh, take that King of Hearts and it's gonna be placed in the 21st position. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So once again, just for clarity's sake, the red card is at the 21st position and the matching card uh, from that deck is at the top of the pack. And that's just set up with the cards very easy to get into. You can put that in the card box and start with that. In the card box, speaking of that, you're gonna write King of Hearts, pretty straightforward. Just write that on the lip inside the cards. Uh, and this effect is called overkill because it is a little bit of overkill. You're gonna keep making the King of Hearts, King of Hearts, King of Hearts, King of Hearts, uh, but that's also what makes the effect so amazing to spectators. So another cool feature of it. Um, you could really, I've seen people do variations of this where they have King of Hearts written on their socks. So you take off their shoes and the bottom of their feet says King and a heart on one sock. You know, one sock and another has the heart. I've seen people wear a shirt that says King of Hearts on underneath and they unbutton their shirt and it's written underneath. Uh, you can take this as far as you wanna go. This is the standard version uh, as published by uh, Paul Harris and Art of Astonishment Volume 2. So what's gonna happen now? You have your setup, you have this ready to go, and you're gonna tell the spectator you want them to cut a small packet. Now, some professional tips here. What happens if they cut and um, you think it's too much, right? So let's just say they cut up a big packet like this. You should get an idea of how many cards 20 cards is. You want them cutting less than 20 cards, obviously, but this is roughly what 20 cards looks like. So this just to give you an idea. Once you get this idea of what uh, this looks like, now, you'll be able to look for it, right? You know you know it has to be less than that. So you're looking for really about a quarter of the deck is ideal. Uh, not half the deck, that's too much, just about a quarter. And here's some tips on how to do that. First off, if they cut and they cut to that red card, the trick's over, right? Say, look, you cut to any random card, you cut to a red card, but look, all the other cards are black. You cut to the only red card in the pack. That's your first effect. Um, it's gonna already be amazing. Uh, so just use it, right? Use whatever happens in your performance to your benefit. Use that luck to make a trick. Uh, aside from that, let's go back to here. It'll be 21st. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. If they cut too many cards like this, and you could tell already it's too much, say, you know what, put that packet back. I need you to cut a smaller packet, use that many cards. It'll take a really long time for this trick. You're really just using a time justification, saying we don't want to waste your time. This will be way too long if we use a whole pack. I just need a small packet of cards. Tell them to get a small packet of cards. So they cut off a small packet of cards, and now you turn around and say, what I want you to do, I want you to count the cards onto the table one at a time, but do it silently. Uh, this way I don't hear but just go ahead and deal onto the table. And they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna deal their cards and count them onto the table. But what that does is that top card is the King of Hearts. It's now gonna position it at the bottom of the packet. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now they have 10 cards and you can tell them to hold on to this, to sit on it, put it in their pocket, put it in their wallet, or just do what I did, place it underneath the map. Uh, but I know I now have that King of Hearts at the bottom by having them count the cards. So it makes uh, the setup uh, even easier. Now they're gonna forget that they dealt and count those cards later, and it's still amazing when you reveal the King of Hearts, and it almost seems as if they cut directly to the King of Hearts. Now what you wanna do uh, is because there is a red card in here somewhere, right? The mathematics of this also gonna set up that card in the exact position you need. Uh, but because of the red card, you wanna do what's called necktying the deck. So you wanna bring the cards up like this. And what you're gonna do is deal the cards this way, right? So notice what I do here. I bring it up like this so the spectator can't see it. And I'm gonna deal the cards this way. Another way is simply turn your hand over and just thumb off the cards in a circle like this as you go around. But what you're doing is you're doing uh, 20 cards. And again, the justification here is a question mark, right? A psychic question mark. So to set it up, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then obviously once you pass this card, you can start dealing a little uh, more normal. I don't do that. I like to leave it um, so that it's 
felt the same way all the way, so it's congruent, right? Everything looks the same. So now you have this set up here, and uh, because of the mathematics of this trick, because they cut off that packet and the position of that red card, uh, now when they count to 10, but you're not counting from the front. It's very, very important. You're counting from the part closest to you here. So uh, the last card dealt is where you count from, and the mathematics align it. So look, if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, the tenth card is going to be the King of Hearts, my force card. It's actually a great way to force a card, and all you're doing, like I said, you're dealing the cards out like this, and the last card that's going to be dealt is going to be dealt here, and then you're going to count from here, and you tell the spectator you're thinking of a number in your head. When I say your number, remember the card at that position. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Obviously, uh, they you know it's the King of Hearts. And from here, the first part of the effect is now you pretend to read their minds. I'm gonna try to read your mind. I don't know which one you're thinking of. I don't know how many cards you cut off. Uh, I'm gonna get a feeling. I think I'm going with the King of Hearts. Is it the King of Hearts? And they're gonna say yes. Now, part of this trick is that that could, maybe I did hear you deal the cards, right? So you can tell them that. Say, well, maybe you think that like I heard you dealing the cards. Maybe you think that uh, I heard how many cards you dealt and then I just simply counted along with you but I knew you would stop at the King of Hearts. That's why I went so far as to write it inside of the card box. And you see here, it says the King of Hearts and that really is written on there. Let them touch it. See, look, it doesn't come off. Aside from that, after that feature, then you're gonna go, well, not only that, but I knew you would stop at the King of Hearts because I went as far as to make sure that this King of Hearts came from a different deck of cards. So you can see that all these are black cards. This card is a red card. It's the only red King of Hearts. And not only do I that I know that you're gonna stop here at that King of Hearts, but if you look at the packet that you've cut to that you've been holding on to the entire time, turn it face up, you'll see that you cut right to the King of Hearts. I knew this whole time that you're gonna stop at the King of Hearts. Uh, and there you have a brilliant routine. Uh, super simple to do. Like I said, it is easy enough for a beginner, but strong enough for a professional to use. Simple setup. And uh, more importantly, be creative, have some fun with this. You can do it either as a um, reveal anyway. You can write King of Hearts somewhere really big on the wall. You can have it folded up inside of a card box. You can have a big sign. Uh, you can, like I said, write it on a t-shirt or print it on a t-shirt, unbutton your shirt. A lot of ways to have fun with this. Really, you're just proving that you knew it was gonna be the King of Hearts all the, all the time. Think about this concept. He took a simple trick, a way to force a card and made it really big, right? Made it really, really, really special. Uh, so I went from just a simple forcing card trick to, wow, King of Hearts, King of Hearts, King of Hearts, King of Hearts. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, a wonderful idea, again, from Paul Harris's Art of Astonishment Value 2. If you don't own those books, go buy those books and thank me later. Uh, and if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, leave those down below. As always, thank you, folks, and I will see you in the next episode.